We are now on the last card in the tarot key that equates to the ethereal and physical form of the twin souls. And this card is number nine, the hermit. And just as the third eye and crown chakra are connected together at the top of the ancient Egyptian number key, so are the sacrum and root chakras connected at the bottom of this key. Many may wonder why such an ordinary card with little symbolism such as the hermit card can be attributed to such an important and divine number as nine. However, that lack of symbolism and simplicity is in itself symbolic of what this card is revealing. For the Hermit card is showing that the attainment of the Divine Trinity is an inner and individual journey. The soul is now at the bottom gate, ready to make the ascent back to the top, to be returned to perfect wholeness and be crowned with Christ consciousness. However, this journey of each soul must come through walking the inner path and moving beyond each gate by conquering the shadows that keep us bound to the material plane. A soul conquers these shadows of his dark, unconscious nature by having an understanding of himself. And this is done through knowledge seeking and wisdom. Ecclesiastes 7.12 For wisdom is a defence, and money is a defence. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Proverbs 4.7 Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. The lantern he holds in front of him illuminates his path, and it is symbolic also for the illumination within his own heart. For we see that within the lantern there is a six-pointed star representing the hexagram. And as we have seen in the previous videos, the hexagram is symbolic for the upper and lower forces meeting at the ethereal heart. We can see the star also aligns with the hermit's heart, and his hand is held above, aligned with the third eye. For as we now know, the truth of ourselves will be revealed to us through the heart and mind working in harmony. So now let us see where the hermit card is connected on the golden mean section. And we see that this is at the number 34. As previously mentioned, this equates to both the sacrum and root chakra on the ancient Egyptian number key. And when we deduce 34, we get 7. So now we have a symbolic connection to the seven gates that the hermit must traverse to be crowned at the seventh gate as the divine trinity. These gates are also known as the seven heavens. And this is found in many major traditions and mythologies, such as Islam, Judaism, Hinduism and Christianity, as well as in Hermeticism and Gnosticism. And in Abrahamic religions, the throne of God is said to be above the seventh heaven. And this again equates with the crown chakra and Ketha on the Kabbalah tree of life. In the Quran, it states, See you not how Allah has created the seven heavens, one above the other, and made the moon a light in their midst, and made the sun a lamp? This verse is relating to the seven inner gates to God, and also symbolically represents the male and female twin souls in the sun and the moon. The Hindu tradition also has the concept of seven heavens, and the seventh heaven is known as Brahmapura, and it is said to be the abode of the god Brahma. The seven gates are not just representing the ascent back to the divine within us, but also the seven primary energetic points of the ethereal body. Luke 13, 24 Strive to enter in at the straight gate, for many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in, and shall not be able. However, let us look again at the number 34. It is obvious our ancient ancestors knew the importance of this number, and 34 had a significant role in their astronomical calculations. In the prehistoric temples of Chaco Canyon in New Mexico, one of the most famous of these temples is the Casa Rinconada. This temple is circular and has 34 masonry vaults corresponding to an astronomical cycle of 34 days. There are also some very interesting quotes in regards to this number from some notable representatives within the religious establishments. In a vision, Brother Joseph Francis 
tells that one day he saw the crowning of the thorn of our Lord during his passion. By three times one had removed and replanted the crown, and each time thorns penetrated in his head, leaving thirty-four deep wounds. Another is from the priest Padre Pio, who said about himself, I am a priest who prays. One day he answered to his superior, who asked him how many rosaries he had recited each day. Bah! To my superior, I have to tell the truth. I recited thirty-four of it. And Dante, who many considered as being a great initiate, devoted thirty-three songs of his divine comedy to the purgatory, thirty-three to the sky and thirty-four to hell. What Dante relayed here is very significant, as we now understand that 33 is related to the crown chakra at the top gate, and 34 to the root chakra at the bottom gate, and Dante had strong connections within the religious institutions, especially Pope Boniface. So therefore, it is not hard to imagine he had access to secret knowledge. However, there are yet other numbers encoded within the number 9 Hermit card. For if we look at the Fibonacci sequence once again and add the sum of all the previous numbers to this point, we get the number 88. 88 is a very important number symbolically, for this is relating to the male and female twin souls. Each 8 is symbolic of the immortal soul, that is to make the ascent through the seven gates back to God and the divinity within themselves. And when we deduce 88, we get 16, and 1 and 6 are 7. So again we see the ethereal body and seven gates encoded within this number. In Mandarin, 88 translates to Ba Ba, and it is also interesting to note that the ancient Egyptians called the soul Ba Tu. 88 is also the time it takes Mercury to orbit the Sun, and we see the connection to Mercury and Hod in the tetrahedron representing the soul on the bottom of the Kabbalah tree of life. We see the number 7 and 8 also being interrelated symbolically in number 17, the star tarot card. This card equates to an 8. However, when we look at the stars depicted on this card, there are seven eight-pointed white stars. And if we include the yellow eight-pointed star in the middle, symbolic of the divine, we now have eight stars with eight points. And so we also have the number 88 symbolically represented within this card. On the Kabbalah Tree of Life, the number nine hermit card is equated to Malkuth. However, both the root and sacrum energy points are the energetic forces relating to the earthly connection of our ethereal body. In the previous videos, we have already seen the attributes within Malkuth that relate to the tetrahedron representing the trinity within each soul. Now we will look into the other foundational attributes of Malkuth in relation to the ascent back up the seven gates to Kether. For one must understand that the Kabbalah tree of life encompasses many different levels of information, all relating to the soul, not only in the physical and ethereal, but also the soul's creation and ascent back to be reunited with the divine. The Sephirot Malkuth sits at the bottom of the tree at the first gate and is connected to the root chakra. In Hermetic and Christian Kabbalah, Malkuth is known as Kingdom and is associated with the realm of matter and earth relating to the physical world we exist within. This is the Kingdom that emanates from the Divine Source to be manifest in the material but is also reflected back up to the Source in an infinite cause and effect relationship. As above, so below is reflected into the infinity. This is also shown in the number 10, the number of Malkuth, as 10 is an infinite number when divided by the Trinity. The Kabbalah Tree of Life is not only representing the soul at the bottom in the tetrahedron, but also the ascent of the soul back through the seven gates, also depicted 
on the tree of life at the seven chakra points. If we add the sum of all the sephiroth and paths representing the chakra points, when we get to the third eye chakra, this equates to 85. And if you add 3 for the trinity, you get 88. Malkuth is also associated with the world of Asaya, the material plane, and the lowest of the four worlds of Kabbalah. These four worlds are speaking of the four elements of earth also represented in Malkuth, wind, fire, water, and earth. We also see the number four is related to the root chakra and foundation as we have seen in the number four emperor card. The tarot card number 19, the sun, which is symbolic for the material and purifying of the soul, is also showing this connection to Malkuth as both 10 and 19 are deduced to a one. This shows that Malkuth and the sun are a direct emanation of the one which represents Kitha or God. On the ancient Egyptian number key, the root chakra is located just above the ankle. Unfortunately, there has been an agenda to keep hidden the correct positioning of this energy point. As without the correct placement of this chakra in energy work, one's true energetic power remains elusive. In the Hindu tradition, the root chakra is shown at the ankle in many ancient diagrams. However, they are continually misinterpreted and place the root at the bottom of the spine. However, in this Chinese diagram, it is clearly showing that the energetic flow moves past the spine down the leg. This new information may not be welcomed by many practitioners who have studied energy work and incorrectly use the bottom of the spine as the location of the root chakra. However, the proof can also be found when putting the correct position of the root chakra into practice. In the Hindu tradition, the root chakra is called the Maladhara and is symbolized by a lotus with four petals. So we see the number four, symbolic for foundation, is represented in the symbolism related to this chakra. The god associated with this region is Indra who is yellow in colour with four arms and is mounted upon the white elephant Aravata who has seven trunks. In the Rig Veda, Indra is king of gods and a symbol of courage and strength. He is also the god of thunder and rain and he is the leader of the 33 ethereal diva gods. Indra also becomes a hermit in one of the stories relayed about him in the Brahma Vaivata Purana. Ganesha is also another god associated with this chakra and according to the Laya Yoga, Ganesha resides in the first chakra called the Maladhara. Mala meaning main and Adhara meaning base or foundation. The seed mantra for this chakra is I am and within the Bindu dot it is said Brahma resides. Brahma is the god associated with the life force of the divine source. Brahma is also shown with four faces, symbolic for the foundation onto which God consciousness is manifest. Brahma's consort is Dakini, and she is said to be very beautiful with three eyes and four arms, symbolic of the number seven. And she is also symbolic of the creation forces that emanate from the divine and are manifest onto the physical plane. Tibetan Lama Thubten Yeshi explains the forces associated with Dakini as such. When the completion stage practices have been mastered and we have gained control over our subtle energy winds and so forth, there will come a time when the Dakas and Dakinis will come. Physically embracing such a consort is necessary to bring all the pervading energy winds into the central channel, a prerequisite for opening the heart center and experiencing the profoundest level of clear light. In other words, just as when the student is ready, the teacher appears, so it is with Dakini once a soul is at the first gate, ready to ascend and walk the inner path of the initiate represented by the hermit. Dakini is the energetic force that embraces and guides each soul. However, once again, we see it is an open heart that illuminates the path and guides the soul. And we see this is also relayed in the hermit card with the lantern held at the heart chakra.